Hey guys, this is Kevin Budashevsky and this is ischemia. So the cause of ischemia is that there is inadequate blood supply to meet demand. This can happen in multiple ways, either decreased arterial supply or decreased venous drainage. I'll show you what I mean. This can be a complicated topic, so I think it's important, at least for now, to keep it simple. So in the spirit of simplicity, here is an organ that we want to perfuse, has an arterial supply going to it, and a venous drainage coming from it. So the two ways that we can get hypoxia are a decreased arterial supply or a decreased venous drainage. So what are three things that you guys could think of that could decrease arterial supply? Well, one common one and the one most people think of would be atherosclerosis, such that we literally sclerose off a part of the artery such that the blood supply coming through the organ is less. Another common way is that we can get vasospasm, such that not as much blood can flow through and we don't get appropriate organ perfusion. Can you guys name a cardiac condition in which this happens? Good, that would be Prinz metal angina. In what patient population would you expect to see this in? Typically young women. A third cause of hypoxia is decreased cardiac output. So we have our heart here, and that's responsible via its cardiac output for allowing perfusion of arteries and ultimately end organs. If we have a massive heart attack and we're not able to maintain our cardiac output, that's going to decrease our arterial supply and thus decrease our organ perfusion. So finally, we can have decreased venous drainage that results in hypoxia. Why would decreased venous drainage lead to ischemia if we still have appropriate arterial supply? Well, decreased venous drainage means that we essentially have less arterial blood that travels across the organ, and thus we have less flow of oxygenated blood that the organ ends up getting. Can you guys name two reproductive causes of decreased venous drainage? Well, the two could be testicular and ovarian torsions. Can you name a gastrointestinal cause of decreased venous drainage? I'll give you a hint. It is thrombosis of the hepatic vein. Good. Bud Chiari syndrome. So now that we know the underlying mechanism for hypoxia, let's discuss what tissues it most commonly affects. I promise we'll be able to move on to some better diagrams shortly. So areas that are most susceptible to hypoxia, and specifically the most common cause of hypoxia, ischemia, are often in areas where there's the highest metabolic demand and or where there's a transition zone from one blood supply to another so-called watershed zones. So where would you expect this to occur in the GI tract? Let's turn this into a USMLE question. A 60-year-old man with a previous history of coronary artery disease presents to your service complaining of severe left upper quadrant pain soon after eating. What is this patient's disease and what is the underlying mechanism? So this patient has ischemic colitis. It's due to poor perfusion of the watershed zone between the superior and the inferior mesenteric arteries, right here at the splenic flexure. And this patient has atherosclerosis of the SMA and or the IMA. Think of this as a gut attack rather than a heart attack. The pathophysiology is exactly the same. So at rest, he's getting diminished blood flow due to the atherosclerosis, but that's okay because the metabolic demands of the gut at rest are very low. When he eats, the gut has to work a lot harder, and the oxygen supply is less than the oxygen demand. Think of this as abdominal angina. So what's another watershed region of the GI? That would be between the superior and the middle rectal arteries. The superior rectal artery is a branch of what? That would be here, the inferior mesenteric artery. The middle rectal artery is a branch of what? Well, if here's our aorta, here's our bifurcation, it would be a branch of the internal iliac artery. And just for the sake of completeness, we have our aorta here. This would be our superior mesenteric artery. From our superior mesenteric artery, we have a right colic branch. We have a middle colic branch, which perfuses a lot of the transverse colon. And then from the inferior mesenteric artery, right here, we have a left colic branch, which shoots twigs up and down the descending and sigmoid colon. So at the 
anastomosis of the inferior and the superior mesenteric artery is where we have our watershed zone here at the splenic flexure. Okay, so here is another commonly infarcted and hypoxic tissue. What cardiac tissue, specifically where in the heart, do you think is most susceptible to hypoxia? What would be the part farthest from the coronary blood supply? Note that the coronary blood supply is on the surface here, and then blood has to essentially diffuse down throughout the heart. So our layers here are the epicardium, the myocardium, and here the subendocardium. So the subendocardium shown here would be the most susceptible to hypoxia because it's furthest from the blood supply. Notice a theme here. So what specific artery here do you think is infarcted? Well, to orient you, this would be the left ventricle. This would be the right ventricle. <laughs> Excuse the bad handwriting, but I am becoming a doctor. And this is anterior, and this here would be posterior. So this would be the left anterior descending artery. Good. And would this be an ST elevation or an ST depression myocardial infarction? Well, note that it is transmural. It's the entire thickness of the heart, and so it would be an ST elevation myocardial infarction. This is why people get so concerned about STEMIs or ST elevations, because it indicates that a larger portion of the heart has been affected. So moving on to our next organ system, in generalized hypoxia, what organ do you think is affected the most? Well, it would be the kidney. Specifically, what two sections of the nephron do you think are most affected? As a hint, think to our last discussion and just think what the highest metabolic demand area of the kidney would be. That's right, it would be the proximal convoluted tubule, where more than half of the filtrate is reabsorbed, and the thick ascending limb that contains which co-transporter? That would be the NKCC transporter, or the sodium potassium chloride co-transporter. Is this area permeable to water? No, it's not. The thick ascending limb is not permeable to water, and that's what establishes the concentration gradient in the kidney. So again, this is the same exact pathophysiology as ischemic colitis. There's a demand ischemia such that there's more oxygen need than there is blood supply to provide it. And as a result, we have ATPases that fail. So if you performed a urinalysis on this person, what would you expect it to show? Well, we have areas of necrosis, and in those areas, the cells slough off and form a muddy brown cast, which is pathognomonic for what? That would be acute tubular necrosis, or ATN. You'll see this happen all the time on the wards. So let's say this is from a 65-year-old woman who presents to you after her elevated blood pressure was significantly lowered with labetalol. She recently developed right-sided weakness and numbness in her upper leg and her upper arm. Where is her lesion? So you'll have to think back to your neuro course to recall the homunculus, but here's her MRI and here is her infarction, which is situated in the watershed zone between which two vessels? That would be anterior cerebral artery and the middle cerebral artery. Good. So besides the watershed area, what types of cerebral cells do you think have the highest metabolism and thus are the most susceptible to hypoxia? Well, the Purkinje cells of the cerebellum, shown here, as well as the pyramidal cells of the hippocampus. What type of necrosis would we expect to observe in the brain? Remember that the brain only undergoes liquefactive necrosis, even if it's after a thrombotic event. So the liver is difficult to infarct due to its dual blood supply. However, looking at this microscopic section, what area would be most susceptible to hypoxia? So to answer this, let's think about where the blood comes from and where it's going. So here is a portal triad, which consists of what? There are two structures that facilitate flow of blood into the liver, which are branches of the portal vein and branches of the hepatic artery. And finally, one that transports bile via bile ductules that eventually coalesce into the common bile duct. So if blood is entering from the portal triad here and heading towards the central vein here, which structure is the last to receive the oxygen? 
Well, we have zone 1, which is the periportal zone, zone 2, which is the intermediate zone, and zone 3, which is the pericentral or centrolabular zone. So the answer would be zone 3. That would be the first area to infarct. So that's infarction, and that's ischemia.